welcome back to the show. Today we have Scott Moody. He's the co-founder and CEO at K4 Connect. Scott, welcome back to the show. It's great to be here. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on the show. I think what you guys are doing at K4 Connect is actually really cool and, and much needed. But maybe before we kind of get into that, let's get to know you a little bit better and start off with kind of where you grew up, where you went to school and kind of how you got to K4 Connect. Okay, well, actually <laughs> where I grew up, uh, I can't say that I'm asked that question too often, but uh, it was on the Jersey Shore. Okay, very so, cool. So uh, was pretty much raised there, but went to school off in uh, North Carolina, Raleigh, North Carolina. Okay, what did you take there? Specifically North Carolina State. Okay, what did you take I'm sorry? there? What did you take there? Uh, I took uh, engineering. Actually, my first year, I was in um, uh, economics. But I pretty quickly decided that uh, the only way I was really going to get a good job with an economics degree was to get a master's. And I really disliked school immensely. <laughs> so very quickly, I decided I didn't want to spend six years there and uh, switched over to engineering. So it turned out to be uh, a fortuitous decision. Okay. No, that's that's very cool. So walk me through your kind of post you know, education career, because you've done some really cool things. Do you want to maybe kind of cover your career up until K4 Connect? Uh, sure. Um, actually, mixing a little personal in there, I, I actually graduated one weekend in 1980, got married the next weekend to uh, Catherine, my wife now of 37 years. Wow, congrats. And That's three great. days later, we moved to uh, uh, Melbourne, Florida where okay. I went to work for a company called Harris Semiconductor, which is now referred to as Intercell. Okay, very so cool. So I started as a new college grad engineer, uh, worked up over 18 years, I guess it was, to be a VP of about a $200 million division. And then, uh, of course, as you know, quit that and uh, co-founded Authentech uh, with a gentleman named Dale Sedlak. Very cool. So what did you guys kind of do there? Because you eventually sold it to Apple, but what exactly was that company? Yeah, so we really focused on fingerprint sensing technology. So if you're familiar with the Touch ID, the yep. baseline technology was acquired from or acquired by way of Authentic. Okay. So we built that company up over, I guess it was uh, 14 years, raised wow. roughly $70 million in venture capital. Uh, took the company public, and in 2012, as you mentioned, we were acquired by Apple. And to my knowledge, I think we're the, still the only public company ever acquired by uh, by Apple. That's very cool. That's huge, man, and and that's cool. Like I think everybody's basically used the the fingerprint uh, sensor at some point, right? On on something. So that, I think that's really cool. But I'm curious. Yeah. No, go ahead. Sorry. No, I mean it was definitely a neat experience. Uh, we raised, you know, four different rounds. Uh, taking the company public was, you know, just a tremendous uh, amount of fun, but you know, clearly a lot of uh, very hard work. But I think, you know, one thing that that distinguishes us, and and that actually kind of plays to what we're doing now here at uh, K4 Connect, is when we started that company in 1998. There were probably 50 companies that were doing fingerprint sensing technologies. Okay. But frankly, I didn't really think anybody had developed the technology to, if you will, make the story real. What a fingerprint sensor could do, everybody talked about. But I didn't really think anybody had developed the technology to, as I said, make the story real. So, you know, we really focused on the foundational uh, technology. Uh, and in fact, when we were acquired by Apple, we had over 230 patents. Wow. So to make something as simple as what Apple eventually turned the Touch ID into, you know, really, really took a lot of hard work. So, I mean, I often tell people, and I think it's the same thing for what we do at K4 Connect, to make something very simple is often very hard. Yep. And as a startup, as an entrepreneur, I, I kind of like technology. I like that whole idea of you know, something foundational, something defensible, not just, you know, throwing out an app, if you will, and, and hoping people buy it. No, I, I think that's really great. So if, if I remember correctly, you kind of retired, basically, and decided to come back and found K4 Connect. Is that fair to say? Well, not somewhat retired. Like, I swore I would never work again. Uh, look, I, I'll be honest. I was completely burnt out. Okay. I, was, I was burnt out almost the whole time we were a public company. Um, we went public in 07. 
you know, and then of course, 08 and 09 uh, happened. And I'm an all in type of person. So uh, was really, truly burnt out. Um, swore I would never work again. Swore, double swore I would never do another mm -hmm. startup. My wife and I moved here to Raleigh. Of course, I, I told you I met her in college. She's right. from North Carolina. Uh, and they had a great ecosystem building up here in, in, in the Raleigh-Durham area. So while I wanted to be involved in startups and not do one, um, we thought this would be a great place to move, and, and, and it was. I was exceedingly active in the startup community. Although I was retired, I was very busy. Uh, but it was a good kind of busy. Uh, and then it was, uh, as I mentioned to you uh, in our prior interview, um, it was on a trip to Rwanda uh, that I was inspired to start another company. Sure. So what exactly is K4 Connect? And, and walk us through kind of how you got inspired to actually get back in the game <laughs> full time. Well, starting, you know, with with the inspiration, if you will, is that this trip to Rwanda, I was there with a group uh, called Hope International, which is a microfinance organization that I was on the regional board of. Uh, the um, I had been to Rwanda uh, a few times previously on mission trips. OK, uh, but this was, you know, really focused on the microfinance. And I, I just happened to meet this person named Jennifer. And uh, Jennifer had gone over right after the genocide to open an orphanage, ends up opening a dozen or so orphanages, wow. starts cooking cakes for the kids uh, just for birthdays and stuff. And next thing you know, she opens up a small business cooking cakes for the people around Kigali. Then from that, bought a coffee shop, which is actually where I met her. Okay. And um, she uh, uh, she turned it into a coffee shop and a bakery, only employed battered women with the idea of training them to be bakers. And then they would go off and start their own micro bakeries. And, uh, and that's where we were involved or Hope International was involved because of the uh, finance arm of that. And, and I'll just tell you, I mean, when I met her, it was, it was embarrassing. Um, here I thought I was doing good things like many people that retired. But when you met somebody like Jennifer and realized that what she was doing, you know, in terms of good things for the world, then I realized I wasn't doing enough. And uh, that's when I came back, uh, spoke to my wife, Catherine, about the whole idea of starting another company. And if it was successful, then we could use the proceeds to help others. Now, Very frankly, cool. it wasn't overly, it wasn't necessarily mission centered at the time. It wasn't focused on older adults and people living with disabilities. But the idea, the foundational idea of K4 Connect, when Jonathan Gould and I started the company, was to develop a software platform that could really integrate everything, not just things, i.e. IoT, but what people refer to as IOE. So it could be things, it could be services, it could be software, et cetera, et cetera. And, and that's what we... Um, started to develop. In fact, uh, I think by the end of, of last year, you know, we now have uh, 17 patents. Wow. So it was really to develop that technology. We started the company without picking a market, which I know sounds <laughs> strange, but since Catherine and I were funding the company, we could do strange if we wanted to. Sure. And uh, uh, so we, we developed that foundational technology and it was only um, as we were really seriously looking at a market that we decided to focus on older adults and people living with disabilities. Interesting. So what exactly do you guys provide? Because I think it's actually really cool technology uh, and you know, you're kind of amalgamating a bunch of stuff together, but what exactly do you guys do? Well, and that's exactly right. We bring a bunch of stuff together. I mean, at, at the baseline, right, and your audience will understand, we're a software platform. Sure. So what we do is we integrate all these things, and then we provide access to those things through a common application. Okay. Our first product is something called K4 Community, and it's specifically designed for senior living communities, for the residents and the operators. For the residents, we really design around three what we call design pillars, what we call simpler, healthier, and happier. The simpler element is to integrate every aspect right, of home automation into a common platform. And so just think of home automation, except I like to think that we do it better than other people out there, and sure. that plays a lot of our patents. The healthier element is really integrating all of your health and wellness products. So it could be things like a blood pressure monitor, 
a scale, um, an activity uh, tracker, all of those kind of things. And then we do things like uh, provide wellness information and pill reminders. And then the happier element is all about providing connection. So in a senior living community, what we do is one, we digitize everything in the community. You can sign up for activities, you can take surveys, you can order food, you can do all of those things right through the platform. We provide connection to family and friends outside the community. So video chat like we're doing now, sure. or uh, audio uh, chat, or message sharing, or picture sharing. Uh, and then we actually kind of, within the community even, we're kind of like the slack of senior living community. Interesting, okay. Right, because what we do is we provide connection from all the residents to one another, whether they want to phone one another or message one another. And so we bring all of those things. We don't make the devices. We don't okay. make any of the hardware. We often don't make some of the software uh, and applications. We just integrate the kind of the best in class into this one platform. And now you can imagine all of the data mm -hmm. that we have. And in turn, we don't sell data, but what we do is use that data, right, to provide to the community so they can provide the, really the best in, in care and hospitality. Sure. So again, it's integrating all this. What you see or what the end user sees is either a resident application or staff dashboard. But underneath is the K4 platform. Okay. No, that's that's very cool. And I think it's much needed, right? Because to your point, a lot of that stuff, especially for older people, is challenging, right? Like they obviously didn't grow up with the internet or um you know, the iPad and, and or some other tablet, right? Like, so for, for you to kind of integrate everything into kind of one interface for them has got to be super useful for these people. Well, yes, but I, l let me take a different approach to what you just said, right? Okay. I mean, a lot of people talk about, well, seniors don't like technology because they didn't grow up with it and so on and so forth, right? But th that's actually not true. Okay, interesting. Right? What they don't like is technology that's designed for a 25 year old. Ah, uh, sure. The analogy cool. I often use is my daughter's grandmother doesn't wear the same clothes as they do, right? But sure. that doesn't mean she doesn't like clothes, right? Interesting. That's that, a good, that's a really good way of putting it actually. That fit her, that provide her utility that she thinks she looks good on. And so what we've seen is that if you provide something that provides true utility, right? That is simple for them to use right? That is something that they're used to. Then that fact of the matter is they will use it. A hundred percent of the residents where we're installed actually use the home automation features. Wow. And something over 70% use the application on at least a weekly basis. Our numbers, right, for older adults using K4 community rival Facebook, wow. uh, Snapchat, or anything else for their demographics. Sure. So again, if you design it right, folks will use it. I think the other thing that you'll say, people will say, well, geez, people will be used to this in 10 years. But remember, the iPhone's only 10 years old. Mm -hmm. 10 years from now, we're probably gonna have all kinds of different technologies, sure. right? So taking the best in class of those technologies, which are often designed for that 25 to 35 year old set, right? And then taking those and providing those to people that probably get more utility from them. I see us doing this for a very long time. No, I 100% I agree. And I, and I remember like when we you did the radio version of the show, we, we talked a lot about kind of the automation part of it. Because I think like and I think, well, a lot of people don't think about it or take for granted, you know, well, Yes, it's nice to be able to call out to Google Home or Alexa or whatever and say like, pause my TV or turn on my lights because we're, we're lazy or it's more convenient. But for some of the stuff that you're providing, like it takes a lot of energy for some of the people with maybe disability or, you know, they, getting up is a kind of a challenge, right? And where you guys really help that kind of stuff. So do you want to maybe kind of talk about how people actually use the platform in kind of those communities? Yeah, I mean, so for the happier element, I've, you know, given those examples. And, sure. and that whole thing of being able to stay connected, particularly as your mobility may go down, is critically important. And look, happiness 
it's the most important element in your life sure. and leads to everything else, i.e. being healthier, right? So in the, ha in, the, in the healthier element, of course, we work with Garmin and others in terms of activity trackers. And of course, we do scales and everything. So one, you're not just going to the doctor once every six months and, you know, getting a little bit of information, right? Just like you will, or I will, or so many others do, you know, now's the opportunity to track your own health, sure. right? And kind of set your own goals and know how you're doing against those goals. And look, whether you're 85 or 25, right, you want to stay healthier. And now we provide the information to do that, just like others provide it to a 25-year-old. And then, of course, in the simpler, actually, if you think about it, we all, the, the, the simpler part is really about driving independence, and if yeah, you think sure. about it, whether you're 25, 50, or 85, right, you want an independent, healthy, mm -hmm. and happy life. We just utilize technology to help foster that for people, right, that are older or might be living with some, uh, some disability. So uh, in a senior living community, there are things like, uh, you know, we provide lights and motion sensors and thermostats and just a very, you know, simple example is lights coming on when you get out of bed because we also provide, you know, bed sensors, right? Oh, of course, at the same time, some information can be generally provided to the staff. If a resident usually got up once a night, but now is getting up four or five times a night, trending over time, and they can see that data and maybe go to see if there's an issue. Could be a UTI, right? Um, there's even ideas, I mean, it's simple, we're used to it, but just changing the temperature at night. Oh, sure. You will sleep better at a lower temperature at night. And sleep is unbelievably important to health. And again, this is all these things wrapped together. And so, you know, if you lower that temperature at 930 or 10 o'clock at night, you know, you warm it up again at six or seven to the temperature they like during the day, they end up sleeping better, but they're not having to get up and change thermostats all the time, right? Which in some cases they may not, in fact, be able to do. Sure. In fact, in senior living communities, and I've heard this only anecdotally, but uh, I often tell people this percentage and they say it's low, but something like 40 percent of uh, nurse calls, which is an emergency nurse call, are associated with either changing the temperature in the room or because they're having trouble with their TV remote control. Interesting. And in both those cases, we can actually reduce that. So the staff is really focused on those that need the care the most. No, I, I think that's that's actually really cool. And then I'm assuming, and I, I think we covered this last time, about kind of connecting to the family members as well. So can I see, like if my mom's in one of the communities that you know runs K4 Connect, can I just kind of watch my mom or father or some other family member and make sure they're you know kind of taking their meds or kind of just kind of see their data based on, you know, the last month or six months right. or however long? So um, two things. I just always want to be careful of the term watch. It's not like we put a video camera. Yeah, in the yeah, yeah, sure. No, but, sure. Right. In case of the video chat, it's just like this video chat, except it's done through our system. Sure. So you don't have to download something. You don't have to have an Apple phone. It doesn't really make any difference. Um, so we do video chat and all of that and, and provide all that. Uh, one of the things we're doing, and this is a new product that we'll be introducing probably late uh, in 2018, is K4 Home. Okay. And that's for the people we serve living in their own homes, gotcha. usually with a family caregiver. And that information, right, with approval of the older adult, can be provided to the caregiving, we're, caregiving person. We're also going to do that. Right. Again, with the resident's permission and the operator's permission, we'll have that available for their not all of their family and friends, but maybe their primary family caregiver. Sure. And so the answer to that is, yes, we don't have it right now, but we'll be implementing it this year, this year. Sure. I, know, I, I think that's great. Right. And I think even just like I think even having like my parents are, you know, in their like early 60s now and even just like they're fine in there but like just being able for them to see kind of maybe me and like my wife and kids and then being able to see them and maybe giving that my sister and like just being able to even check up on each other when you're totally healthy all living at, at home I think could be even a 
interesting thing to watch, right? If you if you allow them, obviously, because I yeah. video chat with my parents all the time. You know, my daughter loves doing that. Just being able to have a platform even just just to use, I think, is useful, right? Because being the tech support guy for my family isn't always the funnest, right? You, I'm sure you know. But just being able to give that, I think that's kind of the future of where all this stuff is going, really. So two things. First off, you make me feel a little bit old because I'm also in my early 60s. <laughs> so, you do not look at uh, it, but the uh, the other side of that is um, so you just hit on a really important point, tech support, yeah. right? So if you live three or four hours from your parents or on the other side of the country, right? I mean, you know, who's their tech support? Yeah. Who's going to deal with all of these things, right? And so I think there are two things that we provide. One is that's where our technology really plays out, the ability to actually see when things are wrong. Right. And we also provide the capability. Not only can she do a chat with you. Right. Your parents can do a chat with us anytime they want. Oh, very so, cool. you know, the third time calling you in a week. Right. About some technical issue. They may start to get a little bit embarrassed. They don't want to bother you. They know you're sure. busy, et cetera, et cetera. They have no problem calling us. Sure. Right. And we're there to provide service, usually proactively if we see something uh, going wrong. So that's something that we do provide as, as a background. In a senior living community with K4 community, we're kind of like a virtual staff member. Sure. Um, and in the home, eventually, we'll be that you know, tech support so you're not getting the phone calls all the time. Uh, and probably more importantly, right, they are calling somebody because eventually the phone calls stop. They're too embarrassed. They don't want to bother you. Yeah, fair. And the next thing you know, a lot of things aren't working. Sure. So I think we provide that benefit as well. No, I think that's really good. But sadly, Scott, we're coming to the end of the show. So maybe let's close with mentioning where people can get more information about yourself and K4 Connect. Well, uh, with respect to K4 Connect, which sure. is the one of those two, um, it's simply enough, k4connect.com. Uh, and then from there, you know, we provide information more specifically right now around K4 community, which is for senior living sure. uh, communities. But later this year, we'll have a lot more information as we look to launch K4 Home. Perfect, Scott. Well, I really appreciate you again taking the time of your day to be on the show. And I look forward to keeping in touch with you and have a good rest of your day. All right. And have a good 2018. Yeah, you as well, man. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. Bye.